How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. And it is some uh, hazy IPA action in the form of Tired Hand Brewing's Zucchini Bread Milkshake IPA. Um, yeah. I picked this up um, probably about mm, eight hours ago. Uh, I don't get down to Philly much. I'm not a big Philly fan in general. It's, Whatever, but there's some good beer coming down there, so I went and hit a couple breweries up, stayed with a friend overnight, uh, went to Tired Hands today, and they filled this sucker for me. So, um, the Milkshake series, it's a very, very popular series, very, very polarizing series. Um, I have not had any of Tired Hands milkshake beers at all. It's kind of weird because they've been floating around me for so long, I just never actually had them. I had the actual, what I believe is one of the original iterations of it, but it was from the Omnipolo side. The history goes, uh, them, uh, Tired Hands and Omnipolo kind of collaborated for a milkshake series. Um, and then once they collaborated, and I believe when they separated, um, or not separated, but they it, it did their own thing with their own beers, there's the milkshake series on their side and the Shilk Make series on the Omnipolo side. So right around New Year's of 2015 and the 16, I was at Turst in Brooklyn and I had the Shilk Make uh, strawberry and it was absolutely fucking fantastic. I really enjoyed it. So been uh, been wanting to get these, but it's kind of like a thing where even though I'm close to Philly, I'm just not going to drive down there and go nutty for it just because I don't like Philly that much. But I was down there, picked it up. Longer story longer. Let's dive into this motherfucker and see what she has. As far as what it says on the growler itself, it says, Zucchini bread, milkshake. Tired Hands Brewing Company traded in a growler for the yeast. They will not grill, or grill. <laughs> uh, they will not fill outside growlers, but they will trade in your growlers. So if you go there with growlers and you're like, oh man, they won't fill it, but you can just give them that growler and they will give you one of theirs. So if you want to kind of get a growler, you don't want to pay for it, just go there with a growler you don't care about. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. On the back, it has a bunch of stuff. I've did a couple of Tired Hands reviews um, um, with Joe uh, from NEPA Beer Reviews. He's brought some stuff up. So it's not my first one, but it's the first of the Milkshake series. So let's give it a pour. See what she's got. Art-wise, it's all right. I like it. It doesn't blow me away. The I don't know. I have preconceived notions about Tired Hands. It just bothers me. But I like going down there today. So it's my first time actually going there. Um... So yeah, milkshake series. So here's the deal. This is the, probably the most polarizing beer in, I guess you would say, at the moment in the beer world because it was revealed by Jean, I don't know, Jean or Jean, the owner of Tired Hands and a couple other people that there is a, I don't want to say a manufactured haze when it comes to IPAs, but there's some IPAs where they're actually using wheat flour and other things to actually create a actual haze in the beer itself. Now, that in itself, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's wheat and beer. People use wheat and beer all the time, so it's not like it's a big deal. Um, we'll get that back to that in a second. Uh, two fingers, really rocky head. Kind of creamy on one side, but pretty rocky. Nice haze to it. Looks like a kind of like very lemon droppy, kind of like a uh, lemonade meets kind of a Luden's cough drop kind of color. So it's got a nice vibrant yellow to it and a uh, subtle haze to it and pretty uh, stone cold on white head and that's kind of rocky. So back to the story. Um, um, you know, we there's all kinds of ingredients in beer. So to put actual wheat flour in a beer is not a big deal. But, um, you know, to create an artificial haze, and I use that word lightly, some people got a little bit of an uproar for, for it. Um, what they're, I think they're trying to do, and what I've heard they're trying to do, is basically trying to retain suspension in the beer and have things not fall out as quickly as possible so the beer keeps longer in shelf life. Now, awesome. It doesn't bother me. I don't give a shit. All I give a shit is, is if a beer tastes good. So there's this whole kind of thing, oh my god, they're putting flour in their beer. Well, you know, a lot of things go in beer, and people don't give a shit. So is it work? Maybe. Do I care? I don't give a fuck. As long as it tastes good. So let's get back into it. That whole shit. Don't fucking spend all night thinking about that shit and flipping the fuck out about it. Just enjoy your beer. You know? Anyway. Um, so yeah, I mean, she looks, you know, like an IPA. So let's give a nose, or try to get a nose on her and see what she's got. Yeah. Smoke that weed all day, baby. Uh, you got that icky, sticky kind of fucking dankiness going on. Getting melon vibes. All about the melon vibes in here. 
There's a little bit of citrus going on, but it's all about the melon. It's all about the kind of a weed kind of dankney, dankness, but like a straight up keefy kind of weedy dankness. Not like your super like oniony dankness that you typically get from a lot of breweries like Single Cut or your uh, Sheep's of Hops come, things like that. It's more of like a like a like an OG kind of purple cushy kind of non oniony dankness. Yeah, yeah, melon. Um, nondescript melon. I mean, I, I really have, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm having a hard time with melons discerning. I always want to kind of, I don't want to go cantaloupe, but I just want to go honeydew or some kind of generic melon. So beat me up about that. I don't give a fuck. So I'm getting melon vibes, total weedy kind of fucking vibes. Weedy, not wheat-y. And yeah, it's pretty nice. I mean... There's the whole milkshake thing. There's supposed to be lactose in there. I'm not getting a huge burst of lactose. I'm getting a little bit of kind of like a milky kind of sweetness from it, but it's very subtle, way below the actual like top of the beer, or the, the, the main portion of the beer flavor-wise. But she smells pretty damn nice. So she looks cool. She smells good. Let's see what she tastes like. Cheers. Okay. I'm getting way more of a, like kind of like a semi-sweet tart lemon. I'm getting like um, I'm getting a what's the fucking uh, lemon? Not lemon wedges. Um, uh, lemon bar kind of desserty kind of vibe off this. Which, if you're talking about the zucchini bread, I mean, listen, zucchini, I take it or leave it. I wouldn't say I'm getting a any kind of zucchini bread, but I'm getting a combination of the lactose with the probably a little bit of that kind of wheat kind of vibe combined with that lemoniness. I'm getting a lemon bar kind of thing. I'm getting a dessert kind of bar th kind of thing. So it is accomplishing what it wants to fucking accomplish, which is pretty fucking cool. Lemon is sweet enough to be sweet, but at the same time it's tart, so it's pretty fucking fun. The only thing I would knock it for, and I'm knocking it because I got to talk about it, is mouthfeel. When you're talking about a milkshake, I want a little bit of nice mouthfeel to it. And it just kind of lacks that. This beer stayed cold, traveled with me, upright, didn't get jostled for about six hours. Would that affect this beer at all? I don't think so. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. But it just kind of lacks a little bit in body for me. That would be the biggest knock. But in the grand scheme of things, it's a really nice beer. Um... That lemony tartness is pretty fucking cool. I had a friend come up. We cooked together. And uh, and uh, she brought a um, like homemade... She didn't make them. She brought these homemade lemon... Kind of lemon bar, lemon wedges, lemon bar things. That's what he made. And this is totally reminding me of that. So it's giving me... The fact that it says zucchini bread and milkshake to where I'm getting that kind of lemon bar bread kind of vibe from it. Um, is pretty cool. So it's kind of triggering memories in my brain, which is ultimately what you want to do with, with beer, with music, with whatever. Uh, you want to create memories, you want to actually trigger memories, and it's doing that in fucking spades. So for me, it's pretty fucking cool. Mm. And I can crush a bunch of it. ABV-wise, I don't know if they wrote it on the actual label itself. I think it's seven and change. Seven and a half. So take that for what it's worth. And just say... Um, Let's cut to the chase. Let's talk about it. Is one of the better IPAs I've had as of late? No. Is it one of the better lactose-based IPAs I've had as of late? Yeah, uh, because it's not few and far between. I mean, those, I shouldn't say they're not. They are few and far between. It's a unique experience. It's it, it's something fun to drink. It's something different. Um, and it just it gives you a different texture, a different vibe. It, it gives you something outside of the atypical hop realm when it comes to an IPA. So that in itself is pretty fun. Um, value and availability. 15 bucks, maybe? I think this costs 15 bucks to fill. Most of the growl is around like 10, 11 bucks. This one was 15. Eh, 15 for 32 ounces. I'm not going to bitch and moan, but in the grand scheme of things, I wish it was a little bit cheaper, but at the same time, market dictates value. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, availability, you pretty much have to go there to get it, whether it's can release or growlers. And let's just leave this whole thing with this. If you like what we like this. If you like 
experimental beers. If you like um, well-made beers, because there's really not much negative going in there. If you like just outside the box shit, you know what I mean? Like just it's 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 not groundbreaking. You know what I mean? Like I've had other beers that are kind of get along this path, maybe a different route, but get along this path in the same kind of way. But it's made well. It tastes good. It's giving me kind of what I want. It's not giving me zucchini bread, but I'm getting a dessert bread out of it, which is pretty fun. Might be a unique experience to me. But at the same time, it's just fun. It, it, it's 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 a good beer. I'm drinking it. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy the living shit out of this growler. And let's not take it that seriously. Again, not to harken back to the whole flower thing. I, I get it. I understand it. People want to, uh, you know, generate haze. But at the same time, you can do it for other reasons. Don't flip out about it. Enjoy your beers. Try not to overthink it. If it tastes good and it's not going to kill you, then just enjoy it and go from there. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, all that fun, fun stuff. If you want to check us out anywhere else on the internet, you can. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped. Something like that. Massive beers in all those places. Yeah, another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you enjoyed a nice zucchini bread based IPA right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.